In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to this, our 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. As we come to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us first call to our mind our shortcomings. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, peace to be to your good will. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, man of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the sons of Israel this, You must not molest the stranger or oppress him, for you lived as strangers in the land of Egypt. You must not be harsh with the widow or with the orphan. If you are harsh with them, they will surely cry out to me, and be sure I shall hear their cry. My anger will flare, and I shall kill you with the sword. Your own wives will be widows, your own children orphans. If you lend money to any of my people, to any poor man among you, you must not play the usher with him. You must not demand interest from him. If you take another's cloak as a pledge, you must give it back to him before sunset. It is all the covering he has. It is the cloak he wraps his body in. What else would he sleep in? If he cries to me, I will listen, for I am full of pity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love you, Lord, my 
my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my savior. My rock, my God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. I love you, Lord, my strength. Long life to the Lord, my rock. Praise be the God who saves me. He has given great victories to his king and shown his love for his anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You observe the sort of life we lived when we were with you, which was for your instruction. And you were led to become imitators of us and of the Lord. And it was with the joy of the Holy Spirit that you took to the gospel, in spite of the great opposition all around you. This has made you the great example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia, since it was from you that the word of the Lord started to spread, and not only throughout Macedonia and Achaia, for the news of your faith in God has spread everywhere. We do not need to tell other people about it. Other people tell us how we started the work among you, how you broke with idolatry when you converted to God and became servants of the real living God, and how you are now waiting for Jesus, his son, whom he raised from the dead, to come from heaven to save us from the retribution which is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Open our heart, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they got together, and to dis disconcert him, one of them put a question. Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second resembles it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dears in Jesus Christ, as we reflect the gospel passage, the Pharisees decided to test Jesus. They had heard Jesus had silenced the Sadducees. They gathered around Jesus and one of the scholars of the law asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment of in the law? Jesus replied, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. Jesus affirmed that this commandment was the first and the greatest of all the commandments. Jesus then continued and said, The second commandment is similar. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and prophets depend on these two commandments. The rabbis had actually created a true survey to reduce the commandments as far as possible 
before the time of Jesus itself. David listed commandments in the 11. We see this in Psalms 15 to 5. And prophet Isaiah listed into 6. We see this in Isaiah 33, 15. Micah into 3. Amos into 2. And Habakkuk to 1. They have reduced the whole commandments into 1, 2, and 3. And indeed, to test Jesus, they asked again the similar question after their long survey. Christianity indeed revolves around these two commandments. Our lives and our daily actions should be built on these commandments. Love your God and love your neighbor. These commandments are also symbolized through the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, he showed us that this is how we should lead our life as Christians. When Jesus was crucified, he surrendered his life to God to grant us, his fellow brothers and sisters, his salvation. This shows the immense love he had for each one of us and the same love that led him to go back to God. Through this, we learn that this should be how we lead our lives. Love your brothers and sisters. Make sacrifices for them because it is this love that will lead you to God. The cross that we see is a symbol of this commandment. The vertical line represent the path of man to God and the horizontal line represent the path of man to man. Vertical line represent the path from man to God and the horizontal line represent man to man. This is this commandment. Love your God, love your fellow being, love your neighbor. One can lead a true Christian life only if he follows these two principles. A Christ centered life revolves around this love. A Christian life without God is never possible. Loving God and reciprocating the love he had for us to others are the key of a good Christian life. To illustrate this, let me share an experience with you. A poor boy who asked me for an arm, he said, Sir, give me something. It had been several days since I ate last. I talked to him for a while and I brought him to a hotel and gave him some food to eat. But he did, could not eat it. He did not eat. I asked him why he was not eating. And he replied, that his sick mother and sister at home have not yet eaten. I told him to eat first, then I'll buy another for them. But he refused to eat without them. So I accused him of lying to me because he wanted some money, not food. He said, no sir, I did not lie to you. I told you the truth when I repeatedly accused him of lying. His eyes were welled up with tears and I came to know later that his house is somewhere nearby. So I went with him to his house to know the exact situation. His house is a small hut and so I, and I saw his sick mom lying in one corner of the house. She used to, to go for housework for living, but suffered from a slipped disc some time ago and she could not stand up after that. This boy first asked her mother, asked his mother if she wants to eat. And when she said no, he said, 
that a visitor is here to meet her. The mother told me about their family circumstances. The father was involved in a court case a few years ago and they have never seen him after that. While I was talking with the mother, the boy asked me to turn back to see his elder sister. I saw a physically challenged young girl lying in another corner of the room. She had wounds all over the body. The boy was feeding his sister and she was eating with tears rolling down from her cheeks. I was deeply saddened. By what I saw, I asked the boy, I have given you food for today, what will you do for tomorrow? And he replied me saying, Sir, I am not afraid of anything. The one who gave you to me today will give me another tomorrow. The one who gave you to me today will give me another person, another tomorrow. This is faith. This is love towards God. See, this boy answered to the man, to me, who called him a liar, in a way saying that you are my God. You are my God. God has sent you to give me this food. This is the love we should have for God. Even in such situations of miserable, miserable times, this boy had a complete faith in God and he loves God with all his heart. He believes that God will provide him with what he needs every day. He never accused God for his troubles and did not accuse me for calling, me, calling him a liar. Lastly, the boy said, God loves me and today I have seen this love of God through you. After this incident, I was asking to myself, do I have the faith like this boy? Do I think that I am standing before, because of my God? I am sitting because of my God. I am living because of my God. Whatever I am is because of my God. Dear Saint Jesus Christ, as we lead our lives, chasing our ambitions, let us not make, not forget to make Christ the center of our life. To make Christ the center of our life means to love God and to reciprocate the love Christ has for us to others through our daily actions. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand. In the Gospel passage today, Jesus teaches us that in order to follow him to the promised kingdom, 
we must love God with all our heart and soul and to love our neighbor as ourselves. With this, as our guiding light, we pray. For the Church, that Pope Francis may guide her in preaching love and compassion, which is what truly matters in all situations. We pray to the Lord. Through our lives and, and by our, our prayers, prayers, your kingdom, kingdom come. For world leaders, as we celebrate United Nations Day, that the core values of its founding charter reaffirmed the equitable treatment of the weak and disadvantaged in society. We pray to the Lord. Through, Through our lives and by our prayers, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. For all who are suffering physically, mentally, or who are abused, that they may find their way in life and allow themselves to be touched by God and the people who care for them. We pray to the Lord. Through our lives and by our prayers, your kingdom come. For our parish community, that we build relationships and togetherness by eradicating barriers of differences. We pray to the Lord. Through our lives and by our prayers, your kingdom come. We pray for our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Through our lives and by our prayers, your kingdom come. Heavenly Father, Grant us the grace to rid ourselves of obstacles that hinder us from loving and worshipping you and to care for the venerable and those who are in need. We make this prayer in the name of Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray a lot on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity. 
and even fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voice, we pray, join with this in one chorus of extravagant praise as we acclaim Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fond of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread giving thanks, broke it, gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, our Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be confessed to eternal life, and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Oh Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As I consume the Holy Eucharist, I now invite you to enter into spiritual communion with the Lord. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in science we may one day possess in truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace, proclaiming the word of the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.